This video is part of a series of videos on creating model railway traffic lights using 3D printed traffic lights and a custom PCB. In my earlier videos I showed how I designed the traffic lights in FreeCAD and 3D printed them as scale models. I then created a printed circuit board in KeyCAD. I've had those PCBs manufactured and in this video I'm going to show some tips for soldering up the printed circuit board and how to program the ATmega 328P with the Arduino IDE. Although I created three sets of traffic lights, the PCB used in this design has only one set of lights, a red, amber and green LED. The reason for this was to simplify the PCB design so that the video on KeyCAD was shorter. In a future video I'll be showing the final PCB design which supports multiple LEDs as well as including an I2C interface for connecting to a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to start by giving a quick overview of soldering up the board. This circuit mainly uses through-hole technology components. These are components that have wires or legs that are pushed through the board and are easy to solder with a normal soldering iron. I've also included two optional SMD components. These are surface mount devices, which are soldered directly on the top of the board. I have included these as a way to demonstrate the use of SMD components for anyone wanting to take their soldering to the next level, but they can be skipped if you don't want to try those yet. I'll be demonstrating the SMD components first as they are the smallest components and it's good to get them installed before the rest. I'll be showing three different techniques for these. Two of these are using a normal soldering iron, whereas the third needs a special hot air gun, sometimes known as a rework station. Although in the past these were expensive, they can now be bought for a fairly reasonable price and can be useful for SMD soldering as well as other uses such as heat shrink tubing. SMD components have a code to indicate their size. These particular components are both 1206, which is one of the larger sizes for resistors and LEDs. They're a good size to solder either by hand or using hot air. Some of the smallest SMD components are specifically designed for a pick and place machine and are much more difficult to solder by hand. For the resistor, it doesn't matter which way around it goes, but for the LED, it needs to be soldered with the cathode, that's the negative side, to the right. This is denoted on the PCB by a white line on the right of the pad but it's not very easy to see. On the LED itself, it's usually denoted by a small marking on the top and bottom. In my case, a small green marking on the top indicating the cathode, and on the bottom, a T shape with the bottom of the T pointing towards the cathode. In this first technique, I'll show you to just place the component and then apply the soldering iron and solder directly. This does need a fairly steady hand, but as you can see, it can be quite effective. You don't need a particularly small tip for 1206 components. I'm just using the standard chisel tip, which I use for most of the soldering I do. It's fairly easy for the component to move around, but I've achieved a reasonable result. The second example, I've pre-melted solder onto one of the pads. This can then be heated up with the component in place and it will join with the component. This should allow you to use one hand on the soldering iron and one to hold the component with a pair of tweezers. You may find this easier than the previous method, but it's still a little fiddly. 
The final method involves the hot air nozzle. This needs to be a specialist hot air device for soldering as it needs to blow out hot air at around 250 degrees Celsius. You also need solder paste. Unless you have a solder stencil, the easiest way is to buy solder paste in a syringe. Place the solder on both pads and put the component in place. Then heat the component and solder with the hot air. The actual temperature depends upon the solder paste and they normally include a chart showing how long the heat should be applied and for how long. But that's more when using a soldering reflow oven rather than this, so you should use your eyes as a guide. If you can adjust the flow rate then set it fairly slow as otherwise it will move your components around too much. But don't worry if your component isn't lined up completely. As you can see, when it reaches the required temperature it moves into the right place. This looks magical when you first see it, as the solder naturally forms around the metal parts of the component and the pad. The rest of the components are soldered using a normal through hole technique. I suggest soldering the smallest components first and then moving on to the larger components. Many of the components including the ceramic capacitors and the resistors can be soldered either way around. But the electrolytic capacitor needs to have the negative terminal at the top which is shown as filled in on the PCB and the diodes need to be soldered with the line indicating the cathode as shown. And the LEDs with their flat side often the shorter lead to the right which is the cathode. I recommend using an IC holder for mounting the ATmega328P rather than soldering that directly. Also, whilst the LEDs are designed to be mounted directly onto the PCB, you could instead run wires to the LEDs which could be mounted in the 3D printed traffic light I created in an earlier video. Once you've soldered it up, you can connect power to the terminal on the left to power up the board. Unfortunately, I forgot to mark which was the positive and negative when I designed the PCB. The top terminal should be ground and the bottom terminal connected to 5 volts. You can easily mark one side with a permanent marker. Unless you've already programmed the 18 mega chip, nothing will happen at this stage. Instead, remove the power from the screw terminal and connect the 5 pins marked UART to a suitable UART. I recommend a CP2102 based UART, which normally has a USB connector at one side and then individual pins to connect to your circuit. If you're using Windows, you may need to install device drives from your supplier, but for Linux, including the Raspberry Pi, that should not be necessary. You'll then need to use the Arduino IDE to program the device. There is a version included in the Raspberry Pi repositories, but I suggest you download the newer version from arduino.cc. They do ask for a donation but you can download a slightly earlier version without needing to pay. If you do give a donation, then that will help to support the ongoing development of the IDE. From the IDE, choose the appropriate serial port and set the board type to UNO, unless you have an older bootloader, in which case select the bootloader that is appropriate. Note that if you brought a 18 mega 328p without a bootloader, then you will need to install a bootloader first. I hope to cover that in a future video. Now load the code of the IDE and compile that and upload it to your ATmega328P. Hopefully that should then work and your light should display a sequence. Unfortunately this didn't work initially for me, which I found was due to being shipped the wrong component by my supplier. I ordered 0.1 microfarad capacitors, which are 100 nanofarads, but they had shipped 0.1 nanofarads instead, a factor of a thousand out. The writing on the capacitors is so small I needed a magnifying glass to read it. When I replace the capacitor that goes from the UART to the reset pin, 
which is labelled C1. Then I was able to upload the code correctly. The code for the traffic lights is fairly straightforward. If you've done some basic programming in C, then you should be able to follow it. The Arduino has two functions, which are called automatically. The first is the setup function. You have to create that in your code, and then that will be run whenever the power is first connected to the processor. It will then run the loop function continuously. An advantage to using a microcontroller is that you can change the sequence if you want a different sequence, or even to use the LEDs for something completely different. You just need to change the code so that it does what you want it to. Once you're happy with the program, you can disconnect the UART and connect power to the screw terminal and it will run the latest version of the code that you have uploaded to it. This has shown the final stages of creating a custom PCB board to control model railway traffic lights. Taking the manufactured PCB, soldering the components and then programming it. This isn't my final design. This version only has one set of traffic lights. It was done this way to make it easy to follow. My final design has more LEDs, which are connected to pin headers for connecting to model railway lights. It also includes an I2C connection, so that it can be included in my model railway automation project. I'll be adding more details of that in a future video, so if you haven't already subscribed, please do so and click the bell notification icon to get updated when they are available. I hope that was useful and I look forward to seeing you in a future video.